Hello everybody. Um, I've had quite a few questions about my seed. Um, I suppose it's like a convey about of how I grow, how I sow my seeds really, um, the production line in which I sow them. So I just give you a little bit of an insight perhaps. So the first thing is I store all of my seeds in these little kind of zippy up bags and I have them in alphabetical order here, as you can see. Certain bags are, have got a little bit more strain on them, like the B's and the C's down here, because I've got quite a lot of seeds in those bags. And I've got them down here in my kind of gardening room in the basement. So it is dark down here, um, no sunlight, and uh, it's they keep nice and cool and they do really well. So that is how I have the seeds. Then every month I choose a bag and this one just happens to have leaves on it, but it's not leaves. Every month I fill an extra little zippy bag here uh, with the seeds that I'm gonna sow for the month. So they're, all the ones that have been done are back in those other zippy bags behind me. And these ones here are the ones that are still to go. Okay, so now let's talk about composts. The left one here is a seed sowing compost. It's the Levington um, seed sowing compost. It's, I think, very expensive, but I don't use a huge amount of it. It is absolutely fantastic, this seed sowing compost. I um, use it for very small seeds. And then the one on the right here is just a normal multi-purpose, just a cheap multi-purpose that I use, and I use that a lot more. It's a lot more kind of chunky, has bigger bits in it, um, but it seems to do the job fine for me. Right, now let's talk about seed modules or seed trays. I very, very rarely sow direct anywhere. Um, even in the veggie pod, I've kind of stopped sowing direct. I find that what I what I do have a tendency to do is waste a lot of seed when I do that. So I usually always sow into modules. My favourite, which I've just found this year, are the container wise modules. And they're these ones, as you can see here. They've got big holes in the bottom. You can stick your finger through to push the um, little module out. The other great thing about these ones is they have these kind of, um, I don't know whether you can see that, ridges in here. And the ridges are going downwards. They're vertical. And that helps all the roots Sent to be sent downwards. They don't start spiraling around like they do with with a lot of other modules. Um, and because of the big holes on the bottom, when the um, roots hit the air at the bottom, they stop growing. So they are absolutely fantastic. They come in, this is a 40. They also come in 20s and they come in 10s as well. Um, that's those. You also, the other one that I also like are the Charles Dowding cells. Now, these are much smaller. You can just see here the difference in the size. Actually, they look about the same size, but they are not, believe me. Um, and they're much shallower here as well. They're good because you can put your fingers through to get the um, little modules out. I like these as well. These are fantastic. They work really, really well. They're made out of a very hard plastic that will never biodegrade. <laughs> but most of my seeds I prick out nowadays. I've started to prick out again this year. Um, I wasn't doing it. I was mainly just kind of sewing them in small modules. But I kind of enjoy pricking out now. It's uh, kind of meditative for me. And so I start them in trays like this. So I've got this tray here that I'm just about to prick out. And these are all my Asian greens here. Mind you, I've got a lot there, I must say. Um, so I just prick them out and I will prick them out into either this size module or the container wise module as well. Um, and that's how I usually sew into these containers. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one handed. So this is this lovely seed sowing compost here from Levington. I've put my tray in here 
and we're just I'm just going to prepare this tray here because I need to sew some more um uh long red florence uh onions because the seeds that I had I think were too old and you can see this beautiful compost here when you get big chunks like this it just breaks up these such a beautiful beautiful seed sowing compost <laughs> i've never come I've come across anything so good but it is a commercial um seed sowing compost so that's why it's quite expensive it um is guaranteed to work and it does kind of it does work for you um i've my germination is normally pretty good it's just that I had these old seeds. Well, I mean, they were meant to be um, seeds that were expiring at the end of 2025, but obviously they're not because with seed packets, they tell you when they're going to expire, but they don't tell you how old the seeds are when they actually go in. Once I get it to that kind of stage, I then start pressing hard. Because we've got big holes in the bottom of these trays, you do have to press down the compost quite hard because you will see that the um, compost will come out of the bottom of these holes. So let's just finish this off. See, that one's gone down. I get it to that. I pressed it all down nicely and then I keep filling on the top. So we'll come back to that. So here's my seed tray here. And now all that I do is I just make a little hole in here with my finger. I usually do it about one centimetre deep. Um, and that is all you really need. I know that seed packets say that you should be planting, you know, um, I think, twice the depth of the actual seed but it's at such a faff that I find that if I just do it this way it's much easier I mean the only exceptions really I would think is celery and celeriac because they need to more or less be on the surface of the soil but um, that's all that I do I firmed this in really nicely you will find that your seeds will definitely come up if you plant them a centimetre deep, like I said, I've never had any problems whatsoever. So here are my seeds that I'm going to put in. Um, I will do, I'm going to multi-sow. So that means that I put more than one seed per cell. And it's very easy. You just sprinkle the seeds in. Um, I've put four seeds per cell in here. And then I just cover it up with more multi-purpose compost and you won't have a problem at all. With onion seeds, though, I am going to put these under lights to start them off. And actually, if you are going to sow um, early in the year, like January or February, you might want to put them. If you've got lights, use them because uh, they are very, very beneficial. Um, now we're getting into March. You may not as much because I've got some lettuce. Uh, what else have I got? I've got leeks lettuce that I've got upstairs. And I've also, I think I've got some radish as well that I started just upstairs in a south facing window and, and everything germinated. So it's fine. It's just with this type of thing, I'm going to put them under lights because onions, well, you know, I've already had problems once with the germination. I didn't do a germination test on these long red Florence onions and I should have. I did a germination test with everything else and I didn't with these because the seeds said that um, they were uh finishing off in like i said um 2025 so that is my lovely seeds here just put a bit more compost on top let's do that and just sprinkle this beautiful levington compost it's just i mean i say it all the time it is the best best stuff ever but it is expensive. 
if you want to have a look at how expensive it is, just go into my Amazon shop at the bottom of the page. And actually, I've got these containers as well from ContainerWise in the Amazon shop because you can buy them singularly on, in, on Amazon. If you buy them from ContainerWise, you have to buy them in minimums of five or six. So there we are. <laughs> right, let's talk about labels now. Um, I've gone back to plastic labels. I was using these um, ice lolly labels or icy pole labels and they're great because they biodegrade. The only problem is they, when they get wet from watering, they then start going mouldy and they can um, degrade down very, very quickly. So you do lose what you've written on there. So just, just remember that if you want to have a plant label on something for the whole season, then you really need to go back to plastic. And with plastic, you can use um, nail part polish remover to take um, the marker off or you can use um pencil if you want to as well and on the label i have put the name and then i put the date on the back and that's all that i do just like so and i will show you how i put them under the lights so behind me in this next section down in the basement i have my grow tents here and I've got these trays on the bottom here that um, have got no holes in them and I put my trays in on top and as you can see I've got some white Lisbon coming up there which is great and then I water with a squeezy bottle like this that's my watering it's got one of these um, little rose thing on the on the top of it and that's how I then germinate my seeds here in the grow tent at the moment i've got some cucumbers i've got those white lisbon, lisbon they're coming out now because they have completely germinated i've got some chilies and peppers i've got some um uh kohlrabi they're coming out as well because they're doing well i've got some fennel in the back and i've got some more chili and peppers just there so that's that Okay, so this is just another example of how I sew as well. Um, so I will get a small pot like this, a 9 centimeter or a 10 centimeter pot. I haven't got any square ones here. I kind of like square pots, but I've got, uh, they're mainly just round at the moment. And again, I'll use that lovely compost, the um, seed sowing compost. Just put a few indentations in here, make sure it's nice and um, firm inside. And now I'm going to sow some uh, herbs. So you could sow herbs in modules if you want to. And I have, I've got some coriander upstairs actually that I sowed in modules. Um, and, or you can sow them like this. And I do them in these little pots because then all I do is I just empty the pot out and I might break it in half and then I will put that out side into the garden or into another um, pot and if I can get this seed packet open that would be really good wouldn't it so I've got some dill here and in my opinion you can never have enough dill and so I just put these seeds on very very sparsely here that's enough the rest goes back in the packet again and on the carpet probably and as you can see I've just got a few here on top just spread them out nicely, turn around, get a handful of compost, put it on top and that's it. That's as easy as that. I also do this if I'm going to do things that I'm going to prick out. Like I said, if I'm going to sew like in, in these trays here, I will fill up the tray exactly the same up to the top with compost um, and then I spread my seeds on top and then I prick out. So, you know, it's relatively really, really, really simple. I've done a pot of parsley here as well. Um, and I've got some more herbs upstairs. And then um, let's just close the packet because that's probably a good idea. Uh, I have had times where it ends up all over the place. Get a seed label a plant label and write on there dill and the date that's it 
very, very easy. And it's done. Ta-da! <coughs> if I'm going to sow bigger seeds like courgettes or cucumbers, then I tend to sow them in these six cells as well. So I just fill up the compost to the top and then I just put one seed per cell. Um, sometimes I'll put two seeds per cell, but if there's something like a cucumber, I've got my cucumbers that are F1s. Usually if it's an F1, I'll just put one seed per cell because they always come up. And I have two of these trays behind me in, you saw in the, um, grow tent and I've got, and, and they have six seeds in each tray. Um, the courgettes exactly the same. Uh, they, they talk a little bit about when you put in cucumber seeds and courgette seeds or zucchini seeds to put them on their side. I find with cucumbers, it makes no difference. I do for zucchini seeds because it's much easier to just put them on their side. But I don't think it would make a great deal of difference either, actually, to tell you the truth. Um, and so, yeah, so that's how I sow the bigger seeds. And you've seen how I do my pre-germination. So my pre-germination is always on something like this. This is an old one that I've got here. So I put the um, kitchen towel at the bottom of a container. I always kind of make sure they're transparent so you can see through them and they get a little bit of light in them. Make sure they've got a lid that goes on top. Wet the um, kitchen towel and then put the seeds on top of that. And I make little labels here, as you can see. I didn't need these. These are just excess. And I put them now, those type of things are usually really, really tender plants like chilies. They're my chilies and peppers. And I usually put them on heat. So in the room next to me, which is my utility room or laundry, I have a um, heated propagator and I put them in there on heat until they germinate. When they germinate, I then put them up into smaller cells. Um, but I have got a video uh, about how I actually do that. So I'll put a link um, so you can see how I then transplant them from the pre-germination to um, the little cells as well. So as well as my grow tents that I've got downstairs in the basement, I've also got this unit here, this shelving unit, and it is in my south facing window of my dining room. And this is where I also start my seeds off. So for instance, these um, spinach here were started here on this shelf. I didn't need any um, grow lights for them. You can see here that I've got some lettuce coming up here. Um, I have more lettuce coming up here, as you can see, and these were all started on this shelving unit. It's fine this time of year, really, if you've got a heated home to be doing things on a shelving unit like this. I've got some um, leeks starting to come up there. And the rest of these leggy seedlings, for instance, these radish and turnips were done in my grow tent. And they've gone a little bit leggy, as you can see, I've got some um, lettuce there and some celery and they're my really leggy courgettes but I don't really worry about legginess at this time of the year because then when I go to prick them out like I have done with the savoy cabbage I'm trying to read them on the back of the thing and these red cabbage here I plant them really deep as you can see and so I don't have a problem with um, legginess after that, they're fine. And then when I go to actually plant them again, I plant them um, deep and I plant them up to the first axis here of leaves. There I've got some more leggy um, lettuce. And as I mentioned for watering, I've got this contraption here which has got holes in the top. You can buy these little um, attachments that you just attach to a normal bottle. I think I had tonic water in this and I just give everything a really good wet. I don't um, pre-wet the soil uh, unless I've got big seeds. I also don't put them in trays. So these trays here haven't got holes in the bottom and I don't put them in the tray and actually waterlog the um, 
the cells as well because I find that especially at this time of year you've got problems of damping off you've got problems of things rotting so I just give things a really good um, water from the top you can see I've got these cucumbers here I just give them a water and I make sure that I watch them every single day um, that tray there that which I just did uh, that should last for about three days and then I'll need to water again and that's how I do my watering of my seed so from this kind of window here we go to the holding table and this is really just waiting for me to take the stuff outside I then take what I need to take that doesn't mind cool temperatures and cold temperatures out to the greenhouse <laughs> that's a goner um, but yeah all this kind of stuff all these onions I've got some coriander there I've got some spinach and Mitsuna all of this thing goes out to the greenhouse because it doesn't mind cool temperatures and for anything that I've got that really doesn't mind the cold comes out here then all my little kind of seedlings here as you can see so these originally were on my um, windowsill in the uh, dining room and then they all come out here these weren't they were already here but they all come out here and then they sit out here until I have the chance to transplant them in the garden or where or the allotment or wherever I might be having room to transplant them so that's all of those so that's my seed sowing production line and um, if you're interested in the seeds that I do grow then I do a monthly what seeds I'm growing and March I had to put it in two halves because the first half was just the leaves that I'm growing for the month um, and then I did fruits roots uh, and flowers as well in the other one and I also bring out every week I bring out two um, moon phase gardening schedules so from Monday to Wednesday and then from Thursday to Sunday so you can also see what I'm sowing and growing then and um, yeah I hope that you have a good year for sowing and growing and I hope that my seed sowing production line video was helpful as well um, so yeah and hit that subscribe button because there'll be a lot more coming this year as we get through the season if it ever stops raining so I'm Susie B from Susie B Living and thank you from for joining me like I said hit that subscribe button and thumbs up that'd be nice too. give me a thumbs up for the encouragement and you can buy me a coffee because I do like coffee just have a look in my links below okay see you next time bye